I read hundreds of pages of legal documents to help you decide which one of these Bitcoin ETFs is the best pick for you. My research showed me that there are basically three factors on which we can evaluate these ETFs. The first one being who the crypto partners of these ETFs are. These ETF companies have decades of experience in managing ETFs, but they lack experience in buying and storing Bitcoin. Where you buy your Bitcoin and how you store it are some of the most important aspects of investing in crypto. I mean, would you really buy an ETF if their crypto partner was FTX? The good thing is that 8 out of the 11 ETFs have Coinbase as their custodian. Fidelity is using their own digital asset services company, whereas Vanek is using Gemini. But the weird one is Hashdex. Their ETF is still a Bitcoin futures ETF, meaning they are currently not holding any Bitcoin. However, in a recent statement, we heard that they will be changing soon to the spot ETF like the others, and the last rumor was that they might use BitGo as their custodian. Keep in mind that the ETF companies might choose to buy the Bitcoin from different exchanges, but these custodians are where they will have their cold storage wallets. The overall market opinion leads towards Coinbase as the custodian, as they are the biggest crypto company in America, with a market cap of over $31 billion, giving them access to the latest tech which might help prevent any cyber attacks. But in the end, it is your choice on which crypto provider you trust the most. The next essential factor in deciding on an ETF is the management fees. Every company is going to charge a different amount in fees, and we have some interesting options here. Starting with the highest, we have Grayscale at 1.5%, and Hashdex at 0.9%. The rest are around 0.5% and under, with the cheapest two being ARK at 0.21% and Bitwise at 0.2%. I know it might seem like this is a very small difference and that it is not a big deal, but your choice today could cost you hundreds of thousands of dollars in the future. Let me show you how. Let's say we invest $500 a month in three ETFs for 30 years, and assuming the underlying Bitcoin grew by 10% a year, with the only difference being their management fees. First, we have the ETF with the highest fees at 1.5%, then 0.9%, and lastly, the cheapest at 0.2%. We can see that the fees impact the annual return, which decides how much you make. The ETF with the lowest fees grew to just over a million dollars, whereas the most expensive one in this scenario only got to about 780000 That's more than $220,000 taken from you just in fees. So why in the world do Grayscale and Hashdex have such a higher fee than the rest? It's because these two ETFs were originally Bitcoin future ETFs, which typically do have higher fees. So as these companies are done with converting their Bitcoin futures ETFs to Bitcoin spot ETFs, they are more likely to drop their fees and become more competitive with the others. Because these fees are the only way ETF companies make money, they need to carefully tread the line of being attractive and competitive by offering a lower fee while also making enough money to sustain operations. And that is possible only if they get big amounts of investments in their funds. To attract more investments, these companies are offering a promotional period on their management fees. For example, iShares has dropped their fees from 0.25% to 0.12% for the first 12 months or until 5 billion of assets under management, whichever comes first. The other promotions are similar, a reduction in fees up until a period of time or amount of money invested. But to go one step further, six of the ETFs have dropped their fees to 0%, which is very exciting and is something you can take advantage of. Apart from the numbers, before investing in ETFs, I also like to factor in the brand value of the ETF company. Crypto, to an extent, runs on public faith in the blockchain system. An exchange which is trusted by its customers can make billions, and the companies which are not tend to crash and go bankrupt. So, for this comparison, we can look at the ETF provider's overall experience and experience in dealing with crypto. As far as the overall experience is considered, I think Fidelity comes to the top on the list with over $4.5 trillion of assets under management and 78 years of experience in the industry. So, the old-school investors who were on the fence about Bitcoin but have been investing in stocks from their brokerage accounts are likely to trust a name like Fidelity, which they already know and have done business with. Whereas from a standpoint of experience in handling Bitcoin, I think Grayscale and ARK Invest are good contenders. Grayscale has been in business since 2013, and they started their business with the sole focus on making cryptocurrency more accessible to the general investor. Over a decade of managing their Bitcoin future ETF has now made them the biggest crypto asset manager in the world. World. With over 26 billion of assets under management, they hold over 630,000 Bitcoins, or about 3% of the total supply of Bitcoin. So, in my opinion, this extensive experience gives them an edge over the other providers. ARK Invest is a bit similar as Kathy Wood claims to have been involved in Bitcoin since 2015, and her predictions and investments have been very controversial as her name has become synonymous with the high-risk, 
high reward investment strategy, which could attract a decent chunk of crypto investors. Picking the best ETF is no easy task, as everyone has different preferences. However, investors should at least analyze fees, crypto partners, and the overall brand value of the ETF before investing in it. Let me know which one of these ETFs would you invest in. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.